You're listening to Catholic Family Podcast. Episode 20. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Catholic Family Podcast. I'm Kevin Davis, and today is the first episode of what I call the isms. Now, today's episode is about patriotism and nationalism, but I want to do an entire series covering the isms. That's communism, fascism, humanism, etc. There are plenty of isms, and I think that what I want to do is talk about it with people who've, who've done a little bit of research, but but really more of an on the surface deep <laughs> on the surface deep dive. That doesn't quite work, but on the surface you know, conversation about it, and also what the Catholic Church teaches about these topics. And in this episode again, it's going to be patriotism and nationalism. And today I am joined by my dad and Eric. We'll introduce them in a minute, but I want to introduce that we are taking a lot of this information or a lot of the discussion from a. I guess you could say it's a pamphlet produced in 1937 by the Catholic Association for International Peace. And that pamphlet is called Patriotism, Nationalism, and the Brotherhood of Man. And this really covers a lot of the encyclical um, from Pope Pius XI called Divini Redemptoris, which is um, which was produced in March 19th, 1937. And so we'll have a few quotes from Pope Pius XI, a few po- few quotes from Pope Leo XIII, et cetera, and also cover some of our, our information from this pamphlet from 1937. But we'll also have our own opinions, obviously, on the topic. Some things have, have become more modernized. Um, the, the terms have changed a little bit from 1937 until now. And so I want to start out the show before I even introduce these two guys. And, and, and tell you a little bit about what these two terms are, because as we know now, patriotism is a little more of a favorable term. We think of patriotism as really just loving your country and being willing to do anything for your country. Kind of, you know, think of Mel Gibson and charging at the British with a with an American flag. Now, nationalism, I think when I hear it, at least I immediately think of of the Nazis, because that's what you know the media kind of tells us that that nationalism equals Nazism, and it's always bad, but it's actually not quite so simple. So we're going to talk a little bit about the different definitions of nationalism, what is socialism, what is nationalism, and 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 also talk about you know the the modern definitions of the terms as well. So I think it's a good time to start. Uh, Dad, thank you for joining the show. Yep, thanks for having me on, Kevin. I appreciate it. And Eric, you as well. Yeah, thanks again for having me on. And so, again, yeah, I think we just want to have a talk before we get started. We're not experts. We're just three guys talking about a complicated subject that was covered very well in this article in 1937. I think it's pretty interesting to see that the topic was covered directly because of the issues in in Europe in the late 1930s. And I don't know if you guys want to start with how it was then or, or how it is now. And I guess, Eric, I'll shoot it to you because you kind of, you're the kind of the inspiration for this topic about um, patriotism and the nationalism. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot it to you and, and put you on the spot and, and see where you want to begin. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things where as Americans and also as Catholics, we sort of have this dichotomy, I guess, right? Where um, as an American, you're very pro America. And I think as you, as you should be. Um, but at the same time, as a Catholic, right, the word Catholic coming from the Greek katholikos, meaning universal, um, by that very fact, you can't be exclusionary in a lot of the ways that nationalism um, promotes itself. And so at a super high level, the way I see this is basically that patriotism is loving your country because it's yours. Whereas nationalism is really putting your country above all the other countries in the world, right? So, so at, again, at a high level, patriotism is a positive thing, a positive ism, and nationalism is actually negative, right? Patriotism is a love of your country, including everyone in your country, whereas nationalism is a favoring of your country to the exclusion of other countries. Um, And I think that's sort of my take on it. Um, I know they're just words and the words, definitions and meanings can change over time. But to me, I think there is something very fundamental in that distinction. 
Right. And I think that if you look at, at this article, it's changed because nationalism, and this is quoting the article, they say, quote, for nationalism, let us repeat, is patriotism applied to nationality? So nationalism used to mean that it was literally just having a love for your country because patriotism meant you could have a love for different things. If it was kind of like you could have like a love for your social club or your city or your liege lord. And so it was much more of the smaller thing. Na nationalism was more of this bigger idea of, of having this great love for your country. Now, as we said before, these terms have kind of changed to mean nationalism is just purely loving your country at the exclusion of of others. But we will talk about later in the show about the four different types of, of nationalism as as stated in, in this article. And I think that they're very interesting. And, and so as you say that your way of, of, of expressing it is definitely more of a modern approach than the article, which was written shortly before the um, the the war, obviously, mm -hmm. um, caused by by the Nazis. And so that I, I guess I'll, I'll shoot it to you, too, before we get back to Eric. What, what do you want to talk about with this topic? What, what's interesting to you about nationalism and um, patriotism? Well, I think, Kevin, when you, when you look at the modern context uh, of of nationalism, really what it, it has become in part is a foil to globalism. And I think globalism, if for anybody who who follows it and, and, and knows, you know, is following politics or, or even even the state of the church right now, globalism, which is kind of morphed with, you know, modernism, with liberalism, with, with almost all of the evils that we have today, have morphed into this idea that we are one big brotherhood of mankind now that that's that part of it's true however what they've tried to do what the globalists have tried to do is basically break down our 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 patriotism break down any allegiance that we might have to to country or to culture or to tradition or, or anything like that and so with that force basically on the march and i think we all see the trajectory of it right i mean the trajectory of globalism, if they if they're able to kind of march unfettered, they're going to end up with a one world government, and they're going to put the antichrist in in charge of it, and and you know basically we're kind of into a dystopian, almost into the world type of a, a scenario. So the counter to globalism, basically in a popular sense, is nationalism, and and that's more basically taking this idea that we are still people of you know, individual countries, and we are so we still do have um, national identities that are greater than ourselves, and not just part of this mass globalist, you know, cabal. And so, I, I think that that um, that where where I, I totally agree with with the premise here that we're talking about that that patriotism being um, a love of country and nationalism being more of an exclusive thing. However, what I've also seen is is it, it's that. Patriotic nationalist um, spirit has been kind of the one that's been trying to serve as the antidote to to the globalist forces. So I mean, we've definitely had some some good aspects to you know patriotism, nationalism, and, and all that. And I think that what we we'll want to do is probably get into maybe the the the, the fine tuning of of the differences between patriotism and nationalism, but at the same time. I think that it it has also been a certain positive force in our world for today. Right, and and as you say, patriotism is is a a good thing. And, and according Pope Leo the Thirteenth, the natural law enjoins us to love devotedly and to defend the country in which we had birth and in which we were reared, so that every good citizen hesitates not to face death for his native land really potent i mean and this is this is not any of this wish wash of, of bergoglioism which is saying you know everyone's equal let everyone into your country and, and let them kind of take it over there are no borders the, the borderless nations and again quoting pope leo the 13th who is who was a very great pope i think in all of our estimations that's that's pretty strongly in favor of patriotism and to your point they are trying to take that f completely away to make everyone have zero love and respect for their own countries and, and only think of it as a as a mass world government. And I think that's really that's a huge difference in what 
that the church is trying to t- tell us not to do in, in terms of, of just kind of disparaging other countries. You, you still have every right to love the country you're in and to die for it. it, it that, again, according to Pope Leo. Right. And I think that and this is where I'm definitely going to want to I think we're going to want to pick Eric's brain because I think he's got you got some great thoughts on, on this, Eric, that that um, at what point do we take this, you know, patriotism, nationalism, antidote to, to globalism and where does it spill over to this negative um, you know, like I, I like to look at Manifest Destiny uh, of the eight of the 19th century of the United States. That that to me was a, a kind of almost your quintessential definition or, or your example of of nationalism, where I think we felt like it was our manifest destiny to take over America and take over the Native Americans and and be you know be this this greater than everybody else type of a nation. And and you know. I, I don't think that that was a good force whatsoever, um, but it's kind of the direction we went at one point. So now we're looking at, OK, if we're going to defeat with globalism, with patriotism, nationalism, to what extent? I mean, in what attributes of that is good and then what attributes of that spills over into this mm-hmm. negative aspect of, of nationalism? Yeah, well, and patriotism, in my mind, is never a bad thing, right? Um Taking the words as they're defined, patriotism is loving your country, and that's a nat- natural thing to do, and it's actually a very good and holy thing to do, as sort of shown by those popes. Um, but nationalism, I think, can get taken too far. So one of the things that's brought up in this booklet are there are you know several drivers towards nationalism, and when they say that in this booklet, they actually mean, um, you know, in addition to the good, quote-unquote, nationalism, also the bad nationalisms. But one of the drivers there is Marxism. So Marxists themselves tend to like nationalism, despite the the globalist sort of uh, trend we see now. But Marxists themselves like nationalism because it's easier to control a given population if that population is shut off from the rest of the world. And we've seen this in the 20th century with, you know, Germany and the socialist, the National Socialist Party, Nazis. We've seen that with Russia, you know, with Stalin sort of closing off Russia and making its own little nationalist country. So I guess I I want to combat the fallacy that nationalism and Marxism are headbutting. I do not think that's the case. Right. I think that nationalism is a tool that Marxism can use in addition to the globalism. Right. Because you can control sort of you know, break them apart piece by piece, make each country socialist or Marxist on its own. And then, you know, they're, they're, they will fall more easily that way than with a global economy. Um, but the other point they make in this little pamphlet is that nationalism is also, um, is also driven towards by opponents of Marxism for that very thing, believing that nationalism is the only way to stop the spread of Marxism. And, and that's not true, right? I think patriotism certainly is a way to stop the spread of Marxism. But like closing off your country and, you know, high tariffs and everything, I don't think that that actually is that effective in stopping um, Marxism. Well, I, I think we know, I mean, the, the one true way to stop Marxism is the Catholic faith. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and I think that that's obviously number one, what what we have to strive for, and of course we're trying to do it now without a functional Vatican in in Rome. But but that that's I think our number one one option. And, and I guess what what's interesting to me is to because because I, I don't really have even this settled in in my own mind in terms of beyond our faith, beyond the Catholic, you know, beyond the Catholic faith, and being in our hearts and, and everything else. That's the true. Um, the antidote to, to Marxism. Is there even a is there even a, a, a antidote on, on a natural political level like make America great again or anything like that? Or, or is even that something that's going to be doomed to failure somehow because it's not spiritual in nature? Well, make America great again. What camp would you put that in? Patriotism or nationalism? When, when I hear I, it, I think patriotism. 
right? I think patriotism, right? And 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 I think uh, there's a the corollary to that. If you really believe in in the MAGA um, idea, then then you're you're also thinking, okay, so how does Make America Great Again apply to Germany? Well, it doesn't mean that we're going to have dominion over Germany. The idea being, let's make Germany great again. Let's make France great again. Let's make the you know UK great again. And, and so, really, I think, yeah, I think that. These, I believe, are patriotic type of, of movements that I think can help the spread of, of um, Marxism, but um, I don't know how permanently. Well, and I think, it's, I think it's really interesting, too, when you look at how the media and all the people kind of view the different administrations of, of Trump and Biden. They, they both obviously have their issues, <laughs> Trump having fewer, obviously. But, but when you look at what Trump was doing and saying, make America great again, what was he doing in the Middle East? In general, at least by the end of his administration, he was pulling out of the Middle East and saying, hey, look, you know, enough of this. We, we don't have anything to do with these countries. This isn't our right. This isn't our responsibility to, to go in there and put our fingers in all of these pies. And in Biden, of course, is exactly the opposite, saying the opposite of make America great, saying, you know, let's include everyone. And, oh, hey, let's go bomb Syria. And so I, I think, again, you see a lot of this is, is it's just. It's it's double speak, you know. It's it's this total opposite of, of what is actually happening, and, and it's it's baffling to me that that normal people just don't seem to be able to 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 see that. And, and but anyway, I guess we're getting a little off topic. But but I think it is still important to, because to, yeah, to follow up on your point, right? One of the bad forms of nationalism is that imperialism, right? Um, as the book puts it, it's a superiority and a haughty pride in respect to foreign people, right? Coupled with imperialism enforcing. Uh, one's own country's systems and everything on foreign countries. Um, and that is a bad form of nationalism um, as described by the popes, right? Um, you're not supposed to, and we, and we talked about this a little in Society and Sanity, forcing one's own, one's own political systems on another country is a mistake or sin or offense against justice, right? It, the people of that society really have to be able to find a form of government which um, which you know fits them fits the people fits that country and so that form of nationalism you know like you said with uh, pulling out of Syria over the past four years you know pulling out of these countries that's actually a decrease in nationalism from a president who is widely panned as being a nationalist pig <laughs> right right, right. And the current president, who is anti-nationalism, is forcing these nationalistic, you know, um, thoughts and tendencies on other countries. So that's just my two cents. Yeah, exactly. And, and as you say, there are, there are different types of, of bad nationalisms, and, and, and according to this pamphlet, one type of good nationalism. And and and. And you see, you see today different issues from from different sides, and people maybe not quite understanding what is what. And it's like you get the term slung around everywhere, especially here in Germany. Nazism is just it's just flung at anyone who expresses anything right leaning, and it, it's a pretty ridiculous comment because if you actually look into the Nazis, they were they were just opportunists, really. I mean, they they started as socialists. I mean, it's the National Socialist Party. And eventually they, they also put the socialists in prison and the communists in prison and the Catholics in prison and pretty much everyone who wasn't, a, you know, totally on board with their exact ideals and mindsets. They were just opportunists. They, they, they were just taking whatever name fit the time. And so it's like either way to, to call them socialists, to call them you know right wing extremists. I think they're both a little bit silly. And I think that that's a big issue in society is that people, they don't really understand what these not even just what the terms mean, but but what actually is at the root of, of these issues. And I think, Eric, that's, again, something that you really want to talk about was, you know, what is the issue with, with both sides of the of the party? We talked we touched on this in our other podcast, The Society Insanity, is that we as, as conservative people, I think 99 percent of anyone listening to this podcast is, is a conservative Catholic. And we always know all of the errors of the left and we see them very clearly. But I think oftentimes we're very blinded to the errors of the right. And, and one of those, as you said, is is imperial, being imperial and, and going and taking over nations. Yeah, like U.S. above everyone else from a patriotic perspective is, you know, I prefer the U.S. because it's where I'm born because I love my country. But the political right, you know, over the past 
I don't know. As long as I've been cognizant of politics, the political right has very much been the party of let's enforce democracy on these other nations, <laughs> right? Let's and and that's something I think that needs to be seen for what it is, which is a bad form of nationalism. Um, and then the other problem, and and you know, this is probably an unpopular opinion on my point is I tend to get a little bit nervous seeing how highly um, Trump was regarded by many on the right and many Catholics, right? Like, did he do great things for the country? Absolutely. Um, but does he have a lot of personal problems and probably shouldn't be worshipped to the degree that he was? In my opinion, also, yes. Right, so, so and and in addition to that, and, you know, just the general sort of lack of charity. Um, I talk with a lot of people, you know, friends, family, everyone who like will, wouldn't, you know, what, what's the saying? They wouldn't uh, pour gasoline on Ocasio-Cortez if she were burning on the side of the road, just in case it was uh, going to put it out. <laughs> <laughs> Some, something like that, right? And, and this, this total lack of charity and basically treating um, political opponents, you know, who, certainly have terrible stances, certainly have terrible ideas, um, but, and, you know, in some cases may even be evil, but treating them as effectively Satan, right? Not as a human being and treating them with the love and respect that Christ and all the apostles and all the saints have told us um, all fellow man should be treated with. Right. And, and according to St. Paul, he says, quote, there is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither Greek nor barbarian. There is neither bond nor free. You are all one in Christ Jesus. And that's that's like you said, that's Ocasio-Cortez. That's that's the French, even if we don't like them very much. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's every country, you know, and, and we sure we can have our dislikes and our little ribbings. But but to really try to stand above everyone else and, and, and be superior to them. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It is gravely bad but also as you say to to put above the to put the president or the government above the catholic church and I, I thought this was a really good quote from the pamphlet and this is straight from the pamphlet again written in 1937 i'm going to attach this pamphlet of course to this the show notes it is called patriotism nationalism and the brotherhood of man and in it they said there is still another meaning which nationalism has come to have in modern times for a rapidly increasing number of men and women it now represents an attempt at a new religion to take the place of such a historic and universal supernatural religion as christianity so again they're putting trump they're putting biden that you know both sides and kind of do it and they put that above god and above the catholic church mm -hmm. and of course the separation of church and state is a, is a gravely mm -hmm. gravely bad thing and not not to dominate the conversation sorry but i did have a sort of a point on that right when this pamphlet was written 1937 i think everyone knows what was going on in germany right um they had just been really really um hit hard by the world war one um you know uh, accords or whatever and and so Germany was just looking for anyone to kind of pick them up out of this terrible recession, you know, place that they were in. And in 1933, Hitler came in promising all these things. And, you know, when he came in, um, it wasn't just Nazis that were happy about it. Right. It wasn't just bad people who were waving the swastika around. Right. At the time, I believe there were even Catholic churches, truly Catholic churches back in the 30s that flew that Nazi flag, not knowing what he actually stood for. Right. And, and ultimately it came out what it came out to be. And, you know, obviously the, the Catholics were persecuted by the Nazis eventually when all that happened. But I think, in my opinion, some of these rallies, you know, whether it's Biden, whether it's Trump, to see so many people so feverishly, so fanatically attending and screaming and yelling and stuff. I'm not saying Trump is Hitler, certainly not, but there are, there, there is an obsession there that makes me uncomfortable. And maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm reading in a little bit too much to it, but it almost seems like the political right has put so much hope and trust in that one person um, that, you know, maybe not putting it above the church in the case of all of us and us as Catholics, but higher than it should be. 
Yeah, Eric, I'll, I'll um I'll, I'll agree with you and and, and kind of one up that a little bit. One of the things that that concerns me a lot is is um I, I was real active out on Twitter for for a number of years and, and just you know kind of served my purpose there and, and moved on. I still watch a little bit of the the political discussion. I'm kind of out there just keeping track of tabs of the news and kind of watching with the Patriot community and all that. And one of the sentiments that I see a lot out there is that we're in a phase now where we are waiting for God to act. God's going to do something. God's going to do a, you know, to perform a miracle because all of, you know, all of the Republicans or all the conservatives are on God's side. So he's going to, he's going to work, you know, our, our in, in our direction, he's going to put Trump back in power. And so you really, I mean, what I see is almost this certain confusion between the divine and, and the political, as if somehow God, you know, has a, has a vote in this election. And as soon as he to say he's going to vote for Trump and because he's going to vote for Trump, everything's going to be OK and we're going to move in in God's direction. And that that I think is like you're saying, that's something that really kind of concerns me a lot, too. That, um, you know, there's no guarantee that God's will for our country is not to fall to communism. I mean, you could probably list out eight or ten reasons why that may be the best thing for us or it's what we deserve or, or whatever it is. And so, yeah, I, I'm uncomfortable about this idea of, of kind of implicitly raising Trump to this divine level. And, and, and not just Trump, right? It's this muddling of the natural and the supernatural, as you say, right? It's, um, I can't be a good Catholic if, you know, um, I don't love, you know, my, my local government or my president, <laughs> right? Um, I'm not going to be charitable to anyone who stole the election away from my guy, right? That, that type of thinking, I think, is, like you say, sort of confusing the natural and the supernatural and almost putting our hope in something that it shouldn't be put in. Um, well, and, and and Christ was born in a stable and died on a cross. What 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 makes <laughs> us think that we're going to have it good? What, what, why do Catholics? This is a real pet peeve of mine in, in these days, and, and Christians too. But but I think Catholics as well that they have this idea that that if it's God's God's will means that we'll have comfortable lives, that we'll have comfortable governments, we'll have comfortable you know politics, and, and it's that's kind of mm -hmm. absurd. I mean that that's you know who, you, you know who else thought that two thousand years ago. Yeah, exactly. The Pharisees, that's ex that's right? exactly right. <laughs> so right. And, and, we're, and see, we're, we're being no better than them thinking that, you know, we need a natural world, you know, a, a physical, um, yeah, a, a physical rulership or a physical comfort. And that's not the kingdom of God. Well, and, and just imagine back in the in the 16th century, you know, during the, the counter reformation, you know, th these are there are many saints who are fighting against unbelievable turmoil in Europe. I mean, you had Luther totally destroying all that had been built in Christendom, and you had millions of people you know, losing their souls. You had wars because of Protestants fighting Catholics. Do you think that these saints, these great saints, like St. Saint Ignatius and, and St. Saint Robert, or St. Um, I'm forgetting his name, but many other great saints during that era, do you think they just sat and, and kind of cried and prayed to God that, that, that things would be better? No, they prayed to God that they had had the strength to save their souls and to to make the world a better place, you know, and, and to save to save other souls, not not to just God come save us and make things good again. Mm. But then, Kevin, I think part of our part of our role as as soldiers of Christ is that um, we 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 do we 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 hope. For, I mean, we pray, we sanctify our souls, we we hope for the best, all that, but. Part of our role is to fight for the kingdom of God, to, to fight for what's right. We just have to understand, though, I think that, I mean, our duty is to fight. Our victory is the final judgment. Our victory is eternity. Mm -hmm. Our victory may not be in this world. And I think, what, you know, to, to both your point and Eric's point, I think we need to be careful about looking for the short term, very attractive, very enticing um agendas that might not be out there from from you know the right or trump or, or whatever and just realize we're here to fight we're here to fight for souls and you know we may or may not get a temporal victory in fact there's probably a good chance we won't mm -hmm. yeah no so here's just a little thought experiment that i had with myself recently 
if you could snap your fingers and make the United States a super Catholic nation, right? All good laws, get rid of all evil, you know, um, you know, just snap your fingers, make America how you would like it to be ideally on one hand. And if you could, on the other hand, snap your finger and you convert some random person you see in King Supers and bring them to the true faith and they become, you know, a devoted Catholic and die in the state of grace. Which one would you choose? That Ooh. second one would be pretty tempting. Right. You know, well, it, and, and it's one of the, the you know, the, the axioms that, that I kind of use out there. You, you look at our world today and you see people just, oh, they're, they're, they're just not, they're not engaged. They're, they're not, they're just kind of following the crowd and all that. But I think the reality is, Throughout history, mankind's always been like that. We've always just kind of followed the crowd. It's just in most, in many other times in history, we've had better leaders, especially better church leaders, mm-hmm. to follow. And so people are, you know, kind of wandering out there aimlessly. But I think that's that's kind of, to a certain extent, the the natural human state. So yeah, to go out and s- save one soul is is pretty attractive. Yeah, well, and going out and saving that one soul is infinitely more valuable than any government or lack of government or perfect government or terrible government, right? right. Um, you, you could go down past saying, well, if the United States were a perfect Catholic nation, you'd have much more you know, people being converted or something. But I'm just talking just of the actual state and the system itself. That one soul is more important than the entire governmental system. Yep. yep. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that that's exactly how how we should should look at it as well and that we should try to remember that our our actual homes are are in heaven you know our, our land is in heaven I, and i really that, that hit me in this in this article as well they said that panje lingua sings about our true homeland they say qui vitam sine termino which means oh grant us endless length of days nobis donat in patria in our true native land with thee they're not talking about America. It's not talking about Germany. It's talking about heaven. I mean, that's that. I, so in the end, of course, the true patriotism should be that we're fighting for God, that we're fighting for our actual native land, which is which is heaven and eternity. And I think if we look at it that way, if everyone actually considered it that way, you would obviously not have any of these issues. You wouldn't have bad forms of nationalism. And 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 I think if we all approach it that way and try to convert people to that way of thinking, then then maybe we do save that one soul. And and as you say, Eric, if, if I could save one soul, I mean, I'll I'll consider myself a, a pretty darn good success. Mm-hmm. And so I guess you know th- the question then I guess in the end is how do we. As Americans, what's the balance we should have, of it? even in our conversations with others? How, how do we get that across? How, how do we not fall into the trap of, of false nationalism and instead into the the good grace, I suppose, of patriotism? I, I think one one thing I've tried to do, Kevin, is is to try to be somewhat detached and and you know. Look for the best of the bad situations and also look for the worst of the good situations. So we see how how, you know, we've gotten Biden in office and the Democrats own everything and we're kind of rapidly moving in a communist direction. But I mean, have you have you looked at the number of people out there who are waking up to the reality of things? Are you looking at have you seen just how fertile the soil is becoming for souls? Because people, I think, are seeing to what extent the government and, and the system and the matrix or whatever you want to call it is failing them. And so, I mean, they may not be, lo- they may not be finding the answers yet, but they're looking for them. And so, I mean, you've got tremendous opportunity. You look on the other side and, you know, let's, let's say that you get this best case scenario where Trump gets back in there and he gives us free energy and cancels all of our debts and gives us new money and all this kind of stuff that seems so spectacular it's like, okay, that would be great, but given the moral decay that's uh, in place in this country, I mean, would that really be the best thing for this world to have that kind of material comfort like mankind's never experienced before? Would that really be a good thing? And then you look at Trump himself. You know, your, your mom, Kevin, w- w- a couple of weeks ago, we were, we were driving home, and she was reading Archbishop Sheen's description of the Antichrist being, you know— um, very charismatic and and being beloved and and all these different things 
and of like 10 characteristics, there are a lot of them, there are seven or eight that, that match Donald Trump pretty well. Now there were a couple I think that weren't weren't accurate too, but but you have to you have to think, even if we had gone in this right direction, the direction we wanted to go, was that really the best? And then when you step back from it, you, you say, you know what, maybe the direction that we've gone, we didn't like it, but maybe it was God's will. Yeah, yeah. taking that a step further, we know it was God's will, right? Um, right. To a certain extent, right, God does have a vote because and everything that happens, uh, you know, happens by his will and by his allowance. So he somehow will make this work out for the better. And, you know, maybe not in the temporal world, but for souls, which is really all that matters. Right. Well, in, in souls, naturally, people naturally go towards God when life is harder. And I think that, that's a hard thing for us to, to realize and, and to remember. But we don't gain saints when, when life is plush and happy and, and fun. The saints have always come in times of suffering, or almost always. And so I think we need to stop being so afraid of this time of suffering. And obviously, we, we're all family men, and we all have to to work and be prepared and be able to support our families and, and take care of them. And and obviously, we should fight for our countries and for, for what is right, but, but also not be so afraid of this suffering and, and so down in the dumps and, and, and it just didn't go our way. And so what are we going to do? I mean, go, yeah, go and fight and go and, and vote and go and do whatever, you know, is, 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 is right. I mean, talk to your priest. What, what do your priests recommend that you do in, in this fight for, for good? But, but just realize again, we're at our best when we're suffering. So, so don't, don't be so, so down when it actually comes. Yeah, I know, Kevin. I, I, to, to me, and and you know, I've, I've kind of retreated from from the Newsday world a little bit, and I kind of keep tabs on things. But personally, for me, I, I'm honestly seeing a a better America starting to emerge, a more polarized, a more passionate, um, and, and I think a more knowledgeable, engaged populace starting to emerge since Joe Biden. And and, and you know, I I think we have to look at it that there's a lot of positives to take from the whole thing. Yeah, right. And, and, and to to try to, everyone needs to try to think, I guess, sit it in your own time and think, what does it actually mean to love my country, but not at the exclusion of, of everyone else? Because I, I do, I, I see this from the right so so often. I listen to a, a sports talk show host who I, who I like, and he's very conservative, one of, he's like the only one really. But he, he says all the time, you know, that this is, that we are in the greatest country that has ever existed in the history of the world. And it's just like, yeah, okay. I mean, <laughs> what does that mean? You know, why? And I think that it gets a little silly at times that I think this is a country that that obviously commits millions of abortions every year and that, that has rampant immorality. And it's like, you know, why is it the best? What, what on earth is the best about America? And I think that with, with that patriotism, it, it needs to come with, with humility as well. Yeah, patriotism isn't beating your chest and saying my country is the best in the history of the world, right? That is actually the form of nationalism, uh, the bad form of nationalism, like the sense of superiority and haughty pride and respect to all other nations. Um, but loving your country and desiring its goodness and doing everything you can for its goodness, that's actual patriotism in my mind. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I mean, unless you guys have something to, to finish with, I, I think that's a good place to end. Absolutely. Any last words? Yeah? Perfect. Well, Dad, Eric, thank you guys so much for coming on. I think it was a, for me, it was a very interesting discussion. I think that that if anyone wants to go deeper, much, much deeper into this, I think this pamphlet is maybe 60 pages or so. Um, it's not easy reading, but it's not terrible either. And again, it covers a lot of this encyclical from Pope Pius XI. It's, it's, it's not incredibly i shouldn't say it's not perfectly pertinent to our times but it is definitely um in many ways fitting to to what we're experiencing now even though it's not 1937 anymore but anyway dad eric thank you for coming on and i hope to have you guys on again to talk about some other ism all right thanks kevin thank you kevin all right until then god bless guys god bless you've been listening to the catholic family podcast If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends and family. You can support the production on Patreon and PayPal, and you can reach Kevin 
at kevin89davis at gmail.com. Ad maiorem Dei Gloriam. All for the greater glory of God.